Okay, so this is the story of how I almost got sex trafficked. Um, I was drugged by a guy I was dating. And his plan was to get me addicted to only God knows what. And then have me however he wanted to have me. And then whenever, I guess, he got tired of me, then... And, and I was, you know, fully addicted, then it would have been uh, turning me out to the streets and m making me become a prostitute. That's what he did to his children's mother. He had three children. And the story I got when I first started dating him, you know, um, about like, where's their mom? How's your relationship with their mother? Because that's important to me. Um, and the story was that, oh, she's on drugs, you know, she, like she's such a terrible drug addict. Well, I find out how she, I found out how she became a drug addict. It was him. So anyway, to the story, to the goods, I was, I think in my junior year of college, I was going to college full time. I was working full time. I was a single mother full time. Yeah, typical black woman story. Anyway, um, so I had a good job, but um, I went and interviewed for a company in D.C. I was living in Baltimore City at the time, and uh, I got the job in D.C., which paid a lot better doing the same thing. So I come home from my interview and getting the job. Um, and I stopped by my boyfriend's house on the way home. Now, I hadn't been dating this guy long. I had only been dating him for about three months. But we did, you know, finally take that step. And, you know, we were sexually active now. Um, but anyway... I I didn't know him know him like I should have before I ever got sexually involved with him. I didn't know him know him. So anyway, I stopped by his house and I tell him, hey, you know, I got the job and, and I was so happy. And I told him how much I would be making. Should not have done that. Anyway, um... I I wound up doing a lot of things I shouldn't have done. But anyway, um, I told him how much I was going to be making. And his response was, now you're going to leave me. I didn't catch that red flag. But I was like, no, I'm not. What are you talking about? I was like, why are you, you talking dumb, you know? Um, and so I was like, look, just come to my house on Friday. We're going to have a good time. We're going to celebrate my new job, you know, um, la, la, la. So Friday comes. Um, Friday comes and, you know, I got a sitter. It's just me in the house and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So he comes over and he's coming up my stairs porch steps and the first thing that he does is hand me a bag of weed now at that time I smoked all the time I was always high like I mean I wasn't I was a pothead totally I was definitely a pothead but like one blunt would last me a day and a half you know toke 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 float around <laughs> do my job go to school do what I gotta do and then when my heart starts coming down toke 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 you know float around whatever right so I didn't have you know high tolerance and you know I wasn't into heavy drugs or anything like that never did those and so um he we actually met um, because he was my weed dealer. I had a really good job. I was in college full time. I had my son. I felt like I had a lot to lose. And I refused to be going to, you know, a corner and paying $10 and putting myself, making myself vulnerable for $10 worth of, you know, 
weed and possibly go to jail, you know, just for a bag of weed. Hell no, I was not putting myself at risk for that. So I would buy my stuff like an ounce at a time and that would last me like a month or so, however it lasted me. And um and that's how we met. He was he was my dealer, you know, so I would I would come around and I would get my stuff and we would chat, laugh, ha ha ha, whatever, whatever. And then eventually he starts giving me weed for free and asking me for dates and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, I was single and he was attractive, so I went with it, whatever. So that's how we met. But the significant thing about him just handing me weed as soon as he got to my place was I always asked for it. Usually, you know, he he would ask me if I needed some more and I would say no or I would ask for some more and then he would give it to me. But he never just gave me um, some weed out of nowhere because I was such a lightweight. It would last me so long. You know, it's it's not like I was asking all the time. It's not like I needed it all the time. So anyway, um, he just hands me this bag of weed. And so at that time, you know, I was like, well, thank you. You know, I guess this was a little gift of congratulations for me getting the job. So he comes on in and he, he uh, comes in and goes and he's in the tub. He's taking a bath and... So I'm rolling up a blunt out of the new weed. And um, so I roll it and I start to smoke it and it's weird. It The smoke is weird. It's bothering me. Like usually I love weed smoke. I'll take a puff and I'm trying to <gasps> inhale what I let out, you know, or giving shotguns or receiving shotguns. I love the weed smoke, right? It's not a problem. It's not like cigarette smoke, which is annoying AF. But um, so it's odd that this smoke is bothering me. It's, uh, it's, it's just bothering me. It's weird. And so I'm like, what, you know, what, what is the matter with this weed? And so as he's getting out of the tub, I was like, here, take this and, and put it out for me. And he was like, I don't do that shit. I don't touch that shit. Overreacting. Red flag. And so I was like, boy, stop acting so stupid. You know, I was like, take this and put it in the ashtray. So he takes it from me like he doesn't want to touch it. And um, and then he goes downstairs and he starts, you know, I guess setting up for our celebration, our sexy time, whatever. So um, I start coming downstairs and I... He he starts playing this music that I'd never heard before. And the music is awesome. It's just like, ooh, it's so sexy. And it's, but I don't just hear the music. It was like I could feel the music in my body, like all over my body. The music was like going through me. It was something serious and oh gosh and the words you know to the music it was it was Maxwell he had just come out with uh some new cd this was back um back in the day when I was young I'm not a kid anymore but anyway it was way back then and it was a cd so this story is dated so anyway the music is going through me and it's you know, turning me on. Oh my goodness. So I'm ready. Um, so I'm coming down the stairs and all of a sudden the CD starts to skip. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced that before. Some of you younger people who might be listening to this, you might not have ever experienced that before, but it, it was just a very, very annoying sound. And what I noticed was I went instantly from 
feeling the music, vibing, feeling the whole vibe. It was going through me like it was almost transcendent to instant rage, instant anger. It was an irrational anger. It was just, it was crazy. I was so mad. And so I come downstairs, I stomp the rest of the way downstairs and I plop down on the sofa or the love seat next to him and I got my arms folded across my chest and I hate him right now. So um he turns the CD off and I'm still mad. Next thing you know, I'm sitting he, he's he's like trying to feel on me cuz I'm naked. I came, you know, he's just got out of the tub and I came downstairs naked and so he's like trying to touch on me, trying to kiss on me. And, and his kisses feel like a damn mosquito bite. It's just like, ugh. And so the kisses were annoying. Everything was annoying now. And so I was just like, stop, you know, just stop. And I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Something's wrong with me. So he just chills out and stops. And then I, now I'm sitting there and I'm left with myself, with my thoughts and how I feel. All of a sudden, I felt like, like my brain, something was wrong with my hearing. Like I had a ceiling, I had a, I had a, a box fan in my bedroom window upstairs because it was like, the middle of July uh, at, at night, Friday night. Um, so I had a box fan in the window in my bedroom upstairs. That sounded loud to me. It sounded loud, like it was right next to my ear. And then the things that were really close to me sounded far away. I was tripping. I did not know what was going on. I was like starting to panic because it was not anything that I was ever used to. It was not anything that I wanted. And so I'm starting to panic now. He done fell asleep. Okay. He's sitting next to me. I'm going through all this because he knows what he did to that weed. He put something in it, if you hadn't guessed already. So I'm sitting there tripping and I'm scared. I don't know what is going on. I am trying to gather myself. I'm just like, whoa, you know, what is this? And I, I got like my, my, I'm just sitting there holding myself and got my head between my knees, just like trying to breathe and, and calm down or whatever. And then I felt this pressure come down on me like a weight. I felt a weight pressing down on me. And then all of a sudden it lifted and it was gone. And all of the craziness was gone. And so I was like, what was that? What? What is going on? So I'm sitting there and I'm trying to figure out you know, what the hell just happened to me? Why do I feel like this? And I can't figure it out. And then the next thing you know, as I'm just sitting there trying to figure it out, this shiver comes over me. And so I was like, that was weird. And then I'm, I'm still, you know, trying to figure it out, still wondering what's going on. And then again, this shiver comes over me and it, it makes me like twitch. So I was like, okay, Brandy, are you, are you being dramatic here? Like, are you doing this to yourself? Are you, are, you know, what's going on? Is this happening to you or are you doing this? So I couldn't figure it out. So I figured if there was any position that I could hold strong, it was if I cross my arms, you know, fold my arms and stand up and just, you know, like lock my legs and just stand there. And then, you know, I would be okay. So I get up, I get up, I stand in front of the mirror and I lock my arms, I lock my legs and I'm just looking at myself and I'm like, okay, you're okay. Let's see what's going on. 
And then after a few seconds, here comes the shiver and I couldn't control it. And I, when I relaxed, I, I shivered and it wasn't me. And in that moment, I realized that he had tainted the weed. I don't know what he put in it, but he put something in it. And that made me very afraid because if a man will drug you, then if he'll drug you to, then he, he has no respect for you. He does not love you. He does not care about you. He will beat your ass. He will, it is a manipulative, it is a, uh, a very, un he, that is a complete violation. And so in that moment, I realized that I had opened the door to the enemy and the enemy was asleep on my couch and that scared the daylights out of me because he was, he was a, a strong guy. He was a big, strong guy. And uh, like he would do push-ups on his knuckles and stuff so that his knuckles could be real rough just in case he got into a fight. And um, he was in, you know, really good, excellent shape and all that kind of stuff. And um, we had all kinds of intellectual conversations. You know, you would, I, you never know. I don't care how smooth and how how good looking and how nice and how sweet and how intelligent somebody is, they could be a damn demon. Okay? So anyway, um he was a big strong guy and I was not. <laughs> so I ran upstairs with my neck itself and got under the covers. <laughs> put the covers over my head I was just so scared and I did not know what to do Lord Jesus help me I guess me and Cassie got something in common but uh anyway I put the covers over my head and I'm shaking like a leaf I'm I'm in my bed upstairs I don't know what to do and I got up and and um no, this is, I got it wrong. Before I got into the bed, I ran upstairs and I went to the bathroom and I, I sat on the toilet and I just, I started praying. I started praying. I was like, Father God, please forgive me. I know I'm wrong for fornicating and I know that I've been living in sin and I ask for your forgiveness, but please, Lord, please deliver me from this man. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I said that prayer, and then I ran into my bedroom and got under the covers and covered my head with the blankets. Now, sidebar, I, I believe that the Holy Spirit led me in that prayer to um, ask God to deliver me because I had never prayed that before. I had never used that term like that before. I wasn't going to church and the church that I grew up in was like a watered down United Methodist, you know, very prim, very proper, very dry, um, church and they did not talk about deliverance. They did not talk about, you know, um, things like that. So anyway, it just came up in my mind and I just said it. And so anyway, back to under the covers, shaking like a leaf. All of a sudden, I hear a voice speak to me loud and clear. It was coming from inside me, but it was, it, it, and I thought it was my voice. I thought it was me talking to me. The voice said, you need to get up and get that nigga out of your house. I was like, clutch my pearls. No, that is not a good idea. Confrontation at this moment would only bring me harm. I was like, that is exactly what I do not want to do. So 
Then I heard the voice again. And, and I'm thinking that I'm arguing with myself. Okay. I thought I was arguing with myself. I hear the voice again. And the voice says, girl, don't you know that I will protect you even in the presence of your enemies? I was like, oh my God, this is God talking to me. I recognize that protect you in the presence of your enemies. That's in the Bible. That I think that's in like Psalms 23. I was like, what? Oh my God, God is talking to me. <laughs> Look, y'all don't judge me, okay? And a little tank tank got a story to tell, okay? So anyway, oh my God, this is God talking to me. And so he realized that now I realized that it was him. And so he said, now you need to get up and get that nigga out of your house. And he said, nigga, not E-R. He's, he, I've learned sidebar because it's been a long time since that happened. And I'm super duper in love with God now. Back then I was just a wild child. Um, but he talks to you the way you talk. Um, he relates to you on your level. That's where I was at that time. So, um, I'm not going to make any apologies and I'm not going to justify anything that I say. You can believe it or don't. Okay. Um, but I know what I heard and God saved me from being drug trafficked in that situation. So let me continue the story. So he said, you need to get up and get that nigga out of your house. So I was like, oh, man, just being honest. Dang, God. I was going to try to finesse my way out of the situation after he wake up in the morning because I'm mad now, you know, that he tried to do this. And he said he was going to take me shopping and give me this money and do this and do that. And we were supposed to do all of this stuff. And I need all of that. You know, I'm, I am I want some payback now. You done violated me. I want something out of this. That's how I was thinking. And God said, don't you know that I will provide for your every need? So now I'm like, okay. He said, you don't need nothing from that nigga. Okay. So I got up. He told me to get up. I got up. And then he told me, put some clothes on because you don't want to seem vulnerable. So I threw on a dress and I pulled my hair up. And so then he said, get all of his stuff from around your house. Because like I said, I had been dating him for like, you know, a couple months now. And so uh, he's got t-shirts, shorts, a toothbrush. He's got, you know, his little special soap. He's got stuff around my place. So he had brought a weekend bag because we were supposed to be um, spending the weekend together. So I gathered up all of his stuff, put it in his uh, bag, and I put the bag by the front door. So after I put the bag by the front door, then the Holy Spirit, because the, the Holy Spirit was just leading me step by step, step by step. As soon as he told me to do one thing and then I did it, then he would tell me to do the next thing. Once I did the next thing, then he would tell me to do the next thing. So then um, I put the bag next to the door and then he told me to call a cab. Now, it's the middle of July. What, like... 1998 um it is like two o'clock in the morning around that time so clubs are letting out and you ain't getting no cab in baltimore city when the clubs is letting out not not like that but i i was in such a state of shock and i was just following orders so I called one cab, hung up the phone, and now now it was time to wake him up. So 
I go to wake him up and then I saw the weed and I didn't want anybody else to get, I didn't want him to give that to anybody else. So I, I flushed that down the toilet, the, the rest of the blunt, the, the, the loose weed and all that stuff, flushed that down the toilet, washed my hands. Cause I didn't know, you know, now I'm remembering that he didn't even want to touch it. So I don't know what the the drug was that was in it. I don't know how absorbent it is. I don't know if it could go through your skin. I don't know anything. So I washed my hands, ice cold water, left my hands dripping wet. So the Holy Spirit told me, um, so anyway, my, my hands are ice cold, dripping wet. He's sleep. <laughs> he's got shorts on. I'm mad because now I realize what he's done to me. So I got, I go over to him and I just whop, 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 smack his knees real hard. And um, with that cold, wet water, and he's <laughs> wakes up out of sleep. Um, so the Holy Spirit told me before I woke him up, he said, okay, he said, Brandy, talk around it. He was like, don't talk directly about what he did talk around it so he wakes up and he's like confused he don't know what's going on he's like what the hell so he, now i'm and i'm standing in front of him fully dressed serious face <laughs> Like looking like Claire Huxtable, right? And and Theo done fucked up, <laughs> you know. So uh, I'm standing there, and and then he sees me, and he's like, "What? Um, what, what what's going on?" And um, I was like, "I don't feel good. I don't know what's wrong with me. I think you need to leave." And we can just do this another time. So he, what, what, what's, what's going on, Brad? Now you playing with me? You, 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 you've been playing in my face, but now you really, you really trying to play with me. And I'm. I know exactly what's going on and I'm infuriated. I'm insulted. I am. Everything is 100% hot on me right now. So, but God told me, don't, don't talk directly to it. He said, talk around it. So I said, I said, I don't feel good and I don't know what's wrong with me, but I don't like being around anyone when I don't feel good. So I think it's best if you just go home right now um, and we can do this another time, but I don't feel good. So he's like, oh, okay, all right then, okay. So he starts to get up and he starts to, I tossed his shirt on his lap. <laughs> Very much giving, get your shit and get the f out, nigga. Okay? Very much giving all that energy. So, tossed him his shirt. He's putting his shirt on. And as he's putting his shirt on, he's looking around. And then he notices his weekend bag by the front door packed full of all his shit his big old bottle of of uh peppermint castile dr bonner soap and all that stuff is in his bag and the next thing you know he starts <sighs> gathering up his anger So now I start to panic and I'm like, God, I'm inside. I'm like, God, this is exactly what I was afraid of. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me again. And he said, say this, Brandy, in a soft voice, say, I thought you told me before 
that you would never hurt me. And Flash, I had a memory of me and him on the phone. One of the many times that we talked all night long. Um, and he had said to me, he told me that he would never hurt me. And he said, say it just like that, Brandy. Don't add anything else. <laughs> he was like, say it in a soft voice. So he's gathering up his anger and everything. And then I, I just said it in a real soft voice. I thought you told me before that you would never hurt me. And all of a sudden, man, Bran, what, 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 what's going on, Bran? <laughs> all that anger just dissipated. I guess guilt came in or he was convicted by his own words and the Holy Spirit convicted him. Next thing you know, beep, 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 the cab is outside. What? For somebody that was supposed to be so sick, I jumped, I leapt out of my seat, Jesus. I bounded over to the door like a gazelle <laughs> escaping from the lion's mouth, okay? I flung that front door open, nice and wide, all the lights are on, wave to the cab driver. Yes, it's right here. It's right here. He's coming. He's coming right now. Hold on one sec. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yes, Jesus. I stood right by that door, holding that door open, and I was just waiting for him to leave. Now, if you haven't caught it already, I am a fool. <laughs> I like to play. So anyway, um, he he comes over and he's about to leave out the door, and he's like. Brandy, what's going on? Can't can we just talk about this? Now, I told you this was back in the day when I was young. I'm not a kid anymore. So um, he, he said that at that time, Wesley Snipes was real big. And there was this movie out called Sugar Hill. And Wesley Snipes was, uh, he played a drug dealer. And he was trying to woo this young lady that came from a good home. She might have been poor, but she came from a good home. A lot of um, similarities. Anyway, so um, when, he, she, when she discovers that he's a drug dealer and she doesn't want to deal with him anymore, he, he rushes over to her house or whatever, and he's trying to beg. He's trying to plead. He's trying to get her back. And she walks over to the door, and she opens the door, and she's like, Romero, if you love me, you will leave. <laughs> and he says, and he says, well, can I at least have a kiss? And she was like, Romero, if you love me, you will leave. So then he goes on, he hangs his head in shame and he goes on out the door. She shuts the door. So he's you now, this guy is standing in my face and he's like, Brad, can we just talk about this? What's going on? Why you won't talk to me? And I was like, Cyrus, if you love me, you will leave. I didn't say it like that, but that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so then guess what he asked could he at least have a kiss <laughs> now i'm playing in your face devil <laughs> so i was like cyrus if you love me you will leave he let out that big old defeated sigh with his bag in tow and started down my front porch steps toward the cab and I loudly I closed the door most of the way and then I boom shut it because that's the only way you can get a real loud bang you know you can't waft the door from all the way you gotta have it like most of the way closed and then you just bam so I slammed the door behind him and I lock it, you know, loud so he can hear, like, nigga, don't you ever come back, you know? Um, and I watched as he uh, got into the cab, or no, 
I didn't I didn't watch as he got into the cab. Um, because I had a a sheet over the window. <clears throat> I grabbed something to drink and I stood in front of the the window because I knew like through the light you could see my silhouette and I just took me a nice long drink of milk so he could see I'm just refreshing myself. <laughs> <laughs> so at that moment. I got upset and I started to cry because I was hurt, you know? I couldn't believe that somebody would be that cruel. I couldn't believe that he would do that to me and, you know, would try to hurt me. Um, and it, 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 I started to cry. Then I hear the voice again, and it's the Holy Spirit. And he was like, girl, what are you crying for? And I was like, God, Jesus, I can't believe that he, he was going to do that to me. I really liked him, and I was really genuine with him, and he was going to hurt me. And the Holy Spirit said, girl, do you know what we just avoided and flash. I had a vision of me completely addicted to some drug and prostituting myself. Flash. I had a vision of my baby son being carted off to foster care because I'm, you know, had become an unfit mother. Flash. I saw myself dead, overdosed from drugs. And now, oh my God, oh my God, look at what we just avoided. And I got this overwhelming sense that God was so happy that I chose to run to him and ask for help in my time of need that I didn't let my sin stop me. I didn't let, you know, oh, who do you think you are that God would save you? You're you're a little pothead, you know, you're you cuss, you fornicate, you you know, you're black or whatever people think that people are not good enough for God, you know, um and the enemy will try to tell you those things to not go to God, right? And so he was so happy that I pushed past my bullshit and just got ugly faith. Just Lord, please forgive me. I know I'm wrong right now, but please deliver me from this man. He was so happy that I chose him in that moment. And I gave him the opportunity to intervene on my behalf. I opened the door for God, dirty as you want to call me, you know, I opened the door for God to intervene in my situation at that time. And he was so happy. And all of a sudden, I'm in my house alone. There is no one there. I felt like I got enveloped in pure love. I, like I felt this overwhelming. It was so palpable. I could feel it. It was as if this huge hug uh, just engulfed me. And I felt God's pure love. I felt his presence. It overwhelmed me. And I was scared and I took off running. <laughs> Woo, Lord, don't go to a black church. You feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Woo, you're going to take off running. Uh, I took off running. 
in my house. So I was in the living room. I took off running. I ran through the dining room and then ran through the foyer and then ran back through the living room. And I did that a couple of times until I realized what I was doing. And then I, if I realized that I was running around my house, running from God who just saved me. And so I stopped and I was like, Brandy, what are you doing? I was like, God has nothing but love for you. And I, I took off running and I was scared of God's love because I, I did not grow up with love. I, I, I had a very loveless childhood. I grew up in a very cold and unloving family, um, um, full of predators and enablers. And, uh, I quickly got away from my family when I got, well, my father married me off when I was 16. And, uh, that's a whole nother story. I'll, I'll link it, um, but anyway, I'll link some other. I got all kinds of crazy stories, y'all. If y'all want to hear them, then please, you are very welcome to come to my page. But anyway, um, I didn't know what love was. I didn't know what love felt like. And um, God uh, showed me his love because he protected me. Love protects when they love you. And then and then he, he just wanted to give me a hug. And so anyway... I was scared of it. And then I told myself, I talked myself, to, told myself, don't be afraid. And then I stood still and I was like, okay, God, I closed my teeth. I, I mean, I closed my eyes. I clenched my teeth. I, I had, my hands was balled up down by my side. I was like, okay, God, I, I, uh, if you want to love me, here I am. <laughs> it's like, brace yourself, Effie. So I just... I just uh, stood real still and um, and again, that overwhelming sense of love came and I felt it. And um, and then the it was like God was present with me. his 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 spirit was present with me and I could perceive his thoughts and he could perceive mine like whatever he was thinking about me i just knew it and whatever it, 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 whatever i was thinking in that moment i was i was all transparent to him there was you know he could see everything and he was so happy and he was so just delighted delighted um with me and there was no judgment you know, there was no, um, well, before we talk about this, we need to check off this sin list. There was none of that. There was none of that. I don't know what who you think God is, and I don't know how you think God is, but if you don't know and understand that God is the most loving, pure, beautiful, wonderful, caring being, that you can ever encounter, then you don't really know him. Everybody that, you know, everybody that is is using God to talk a bunch of hate, they don't know God at all. They don't know God at all. They don't know what spirit they're of. But anyway, I was, um, there's a little twist to this because like I said, that happened to me back in like 1998. And coincidentally, I was, um, I was studying yesterday and I, I didn't do this at that time. I wasn't a Christian at that time, really. I, I mean, I wasn't, I was, I was a Christian, but that only, I wasn't going to church. I didn't know anything about God. I didn't know anything about scriptures. I had no relationship with God. So I was in a Christian in name only at that time, but I was very wild. I was living, doing everything that I wanted to do, you know? So I really wasn't a Christian for real. But anyway, um, now I am, um, so yesterday I was studying and, um, I came across, there's a scripture in the Bible for what happened to me, for that situation, 
where I called on the Lord when I was faced with my enemy. I called on the Lord and the Lord remembered me and the Lord showed up and saved me. Do you know that that is a promise in the Bible? That is a promise in the Bible. Let me read it to you. Now, this is from this is from the book of Numbers. This is written by Moses. And this is God speaking to Moses. He says, when you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets and you will be remembered before the Lord your God and you will be saved from your enemies. God said, sound the alarm. And you will be remembered by your God. And you will be saved from your enemies. That happened to me. When I went and I prayed and I asked for forgiveness. But when I asked God to deliver me. That was the equivalent of me sounding the alarm. You know, because that was in the Old Testament. We're in the New Testament now. We have Jesus. Jesus died to give us his Holy Spirit. So we don't have to go through all those rites, all those rituals, everything that the Levite priests had to do and all that. Kind. We don't have to do any of those things now. We have a personal connection with Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, to our God. But it just came, it came rushing back to me when I was doing my Bible study. And I, and I read that scripture and I was like, that happened to me. I called on the Lord. That enemy was in my house and he was seeking to oppress me. Now, I share that, all that to give a warning to people, young people. Now, I was uh, 24, uh, 24 or 25 when this happened to me. Um, and what you guys need to understand is that everybody that is nice to you, everybody that acts like they are into you, um, you have to be very careful. I dated this guy. I called myself vetting him. I dated him for like, you know, uh, three months before we got to the, the sexual part. You know, I thought that was the whole 90 day rule and all that. See who a person is. And guess what? I didn't know anything. I had spent several, several, several nights talking all night long on the phone with this dude. We had gone on plenty of dates. I met all his children. We went on, um, you know, to the park with his kids and all that kind of stuff too. You know, like after he got a feel for who I was because you know when you're a parent you don't just have people any old body around your children you know I thought I had asked him all the right questions and all of that kind of stuff and I had seen you know proof of of all kinds of things he wasn't no bum you know he worked he made good money he well I guess he did make good money selling weed and selling people but <clears throat> I thought you know, I, he, he made good money. He was taking care of himself. He wasn't no slouch. All of that kind of stuff. And here he was. He was just, even, even though I was attracted to him genuinely, but he was so insecure that he had felt the need to trap women. If he really liked you, because I don't think he had a harem. I think this was his M.O. when he saw a good woman that he felt like was out of his league and that would, you know, wasn't going to be dependent on him or whatever. So he would get you addicted to drugs. And then once the addiction spirals out of control, 
then you're just going to be on your own selling your ass out there. These streets are treacherous. These streets are treacherous. And there's nothing wrong with having a good heart. There's nothing wrong with believing that there are good people out there. Because there are. There are many good people out there. But you have to guard your heart. You have to guard your heart. And you, for me now, I'm 51 now. <clears throat> <clears throat> and from what I've learned and seen in this world, <laughs> the only real way to tell if people are good or bad is to ask God. I've, I, I've met Nigerian people that have conned people for five years straight, act like they love them, get them to marry them, just to take them for all their money. Five years? Ain't nobody got time for that. People can play games for five years. Do you know there are, there are spies and CIA agents and all that kind of stuff. People out there that they are trained for the long con. Okay, they are trained to befriend somebody for nine months, a year, two years, and this and that and the other. Just so they can buddy up to you and get close to you and get access to your house and stuff like that. Like, you cannot tell. You cannot tell. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how dumb you are. I don't care. I don't care. God told me that uh, I was crippled in my mind and he healed my mind. So I know about being mentally impaired. And I guess maybe being kind of autistic or, or not kind of, but, you know, uh, I just... I never been about those games and I I I just was way too gullible and naive and all that kind of stuff. But now I realize that that doesn't even matter. If I have a strong relationship with God and and he knows that I love him and I let him love me and I spend time with him, his holy spirit comes and visits with me. And every day I get filled with his Holy Spirit. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit every day, God speaks to you and he'll tell you about everybody. He will tell you about your mama, your daddy. <laughs> he'll tell you if you got an old nasty granny. <laughs> God will tell you about everybody, you know. People coming in your face, acting like they want to marry you and this and that and the other. And their heart is so rotten that they would kill you to get your money. They would kill you over a damn dollar. God will let you know. He'll let you know. So it I I just I just want to 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 give that to people, you know, because Sex trafficking happens all kinds of ways, a lot of different ways. It's not just a gang of guys stalking the Walmart, snatching young girls and 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 little women out the wall out out the Walmart parking lot. It's not just you know guys pulling up in a van, snatching girls off a bus stop or off the street trying to come out of a store or something or in a gas station. It's not just like that. Some of these people be in it for the long con. They'll act like they're interested in you. They'll invite you to a party. They'll put something in your drink. And then you'll wake up with no clothes on. <clears throat> Maybe in a strange place. Maybe with all strange people. And you know none of them. And you don't realize that you've been bought and sold. It's very, very dangerous. You're way more valuable than you understand. Just you. 
not you all prettied up, not you all dapper down, not you, you know, on your best day and this and that. You, just like you are, you are more valuable than you understand. And there are people out here that will harm you. And some of them are even in your own household. So anyway, I have uh, let this go on for uh, far too long. Um, so I have all these crazy stories from my life. I used to be a stripper. I got, I used to be gay. God delivered me from homosexuality. Um, my father married me off when I was 16 years old, um, because he was just, uh, didn't feel like him and his wife didn't feel like parenting or whatever. Um, I, I have, uh, <laughs> I have all kinds of stories that I can't name off the top of my head, but I will link uh, some links to other stories and I will keep on posting stuff like this. Um, and um, if you're interested in having a real relationship with God and learning how to put on the whole armor of God. Um, because that that is the one of the latest, greatest lessons that God has um, been teaching me personally is uh, to put on the whole armor of God every day. And the Bible says to do that. But like, how, how, how do you do that? Like what, what are the steps to putting on the whole armor of God? You go to church and they say these, these ambiguous things, you know, and they don't know, they don't tell you how to practically do it in your everyday life. Like what does that mean? And so over the last 18 years, um, God has slowly taught me, um, and as he healed my mind and, and as I listened to him and grew with him and, and sought him, he taught me himself through dreams, through visions, sometimes just speaking to me. And it's a process. It's a process. Um, I'm not perfect. And, um, I thought that's something that scared me about trying to have a relationship with God is that I'm, I don't have my ish together. And God straight up told me, he said, Brandy, I don't want perfect. I just want you. And he told me everybody has failed him except Jesus. So don't get upset if I make a mistake. Don't feel like it's all over with if I don't get everything right. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So if you if you're interested in that, I have a Patreon um and it's just uh $1 and 11 cents 111 God's manifestation number. Um but everything about uh I have uh, all kinds of lessons or just not lessons, but like the 30 day, God gave me this 30 day life changing challenge. He told me to do these, um, eight, the list of eight things, um, every day for 30 days. And it was, and I figured out along the way that it was putting on the whole armor of God every day. And, um, and he was like, and see how I bless your life. And so I did that. And, um, oh my God, Ugh, I got free from indwelling sin. I, I couldn't just so many great things happened for me from, um, from doing it, from following, you know, God's word. So that's on there. And, um, just other things like prayers to bind demons and, um, you know, cause if you, if, if you, if you have demons in your life and you know, if you got demons in your life, you know, if something crazy done got in your son or in your daughter 
or in your man or in you, you know, and you just can't control. Like, why do I keep getting this angry? Why do I, you know, why I can't control this lust or why I can't, you know, this, that, and the other, whatever. You know, if you got something pushing you from the inside, if you got something pushing you from the inside, it's probably a demon. Um, but how to, how to um, cast them out. Um, just all kinds of things like that. I'm not into witchcraft. I don't do, I don't do any of those things. The Lord Jesus Christ is more than enough. He is my everything I need and more. And, um, he is my, my refuge, my fortress, and, and he is my God in whom I trust. So I don't, uh, I don't, um, partake in any of those things. So if that's what you're looking for, um, mysticism and all that kind of stuff, then this is the wrong channel for you because I am straight up and down about my God. That's it. I got faith and guts. <laughs> all right. Y'all have a beautiful day. If you hung around this long, I can't believe it. It's unbelievable. Oh my goodness. Hi. Why don't you take a take do do become a subby? Why don't you subscribe and you know just hang out and listen to my stories? I'll upload some more and I'll get better at um telling stories. So and hey, y'all let me know if I if I be long winded or if I'm taking too long or if you can't hear me, that's why I'm in my car. I was doing videos before and um somebody uh sent made sent me a comment saying that they wanted to hear my stories, but like sometimes my voice would go up and down and they couldn't hear me. So I was like, Oh man, okay. Well, I guess if I get in the car and do it, then that'll be better. So here I am. But anyway, you guys be blessed. Oh, there's, you know what? Let me, let me, um, I don't know. I want to give you a blessing. I don't know if, if anybody has ever prayed for you. Um, but this is the blessing that God told Moses to pray over his people. So if you consider yourself a child of God, then receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I want to leave you with that. So now you can't say that nobody prays for you because I'm praying for you. I love you. Okay. You have a wonderful, wonderful, gorgeous day, darling. All right. Be blessed.